Welcome, Welcome to, to church. church! We're so glad you could join us on this Sunday morning at World Harvest Church. And we're having church at World Harvest Church, but there's something else going on. Else. I forget what it was. Hmm. What is it? Maybe the people in the tabernacle know what's going on. Dominion Camp Meeting Day 3! Who's excited? Woo! Oh, yeah, 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 DCM 35, it is day three. We are so excited. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Cameron Fontana. And I'm Elisa Henry. We're back. Have you been watching or joining us every single We every hope single so, service? because if you're just joining us this morning and we're waking you up with energy, <laughs> get ready for a very special day because we still have three services left of Dominion Camp Meeting. But before we get to those, how about Pastor Ron Carpenter yes. last night? Somebody make some noise. Boys, send them in the comments right now. I got to tell you what, one of the best quotes he had last night oh. was, we are still becoming what God has finished in us. Amen. I Amen. mean, that just blows your mind when yes. you think about time. But man, we're so excited for the rest of the weekend and what we still have this morning. I know. We still have an amazing service this morning. We have Bishop Tudor Bismarck coming. Anybody Woo! excited for Bishop Tudor Bismarck? Yes, yes. Now, if you are joining us in person here at our Columbus, Ohio campus, welcome. We are so happy to have you this morning. And if you're joining us online, welcome. We want you to go to our online streaming platform. It's whc.life slash online. We have pastors standing by to pray with you. You can give us your prayer request. Tell us what you're believing God for. Tell us what you are hoping God does in your life in this service. You can also comment on Facebook and on Instagram. Yeah. Tell us where you're watching from. Tell us what you're believing Ooh. God for. We're going to give you some shout outs here this morning. Well, speaking of shout outs, we want to give you shout outs right now. Cheryl's watching. Tabitha's watching. Cheryl said, thank you, Jesus, for our online campus. Can we yes. thank the technology that's available right now for people to spread the gospel around the world? Awesome. And our awesome media team that's keeping this thing going. We appreciate you guys. Give a shout out to George Joe's watching from Belize City, worshiping the Lord today. Amen. Belize, that's Love fancy that. right there. <laughs> we also have Marilla, Ann, and Shell watching from Hiram, Georgia. So keep the comments coming. Again, if you haven't done so already, share this so your circle, your social media world can hear the gospel and feel this anointing this morning. Amen. We, that's right. Yeah. We want you to leave your email address because our pastor has a free gift just for you. So just type in your email address and we'll get that gift sent out right to you. Now, if you're joining us here on the campus of World Harvest Church and you have kids, they have been having a blast oh, all yes. weekend, literally, literally <laughs> at Space Camp and they're having a great time. And if you're watching at home, you still have time to get your kids here to the mm -hmm. campus in Columbus, Ohio today. But this morning's very excited because if you have kids, you want to get them registered right now because this morning is when they're giving away that COSI family pack to our science museum yes. in Columbus, Ohio. So that giveaways this morning. If you got kids here, if you're watching in the foyer, get them registered right now. Absolutely. Now, Cameron, you mentioned Ron Carpenter last night, Ooh. an incredible service. We also have Medina Pullings. We have Bishop RJ Matthews, plus our pastor, yep. Ghostbuster, right? We want you to get all of the conference sets so you can get those CD, DVD, or digital for just $40, or you can get all formats for just $60. Ooh. You don't want to miss those conference sets. Even if you were in here, you want to just get them all in your spirit, watch them, watch them again. And if you missed them, definitely want to get those services for yeah, sure. Yeah, we got more people watching online too from around the world. Namusa is watching from New Delhi, India, wow. as we speak. I love that. The time change, it must be like the middle of the night over there. I was wondering that That's too, like, there? I love that. <laughs> then we've got Brandy watching us from Benton, Arkansas. She said, hashtag blessed. You are blessed, and so are we. So are all of us here at DCM. Love That's it. That's right. And something very exciting is coming out very soon. How many people love to read, like Elisa Henry and all of us here? <laughs> That's right. Revival If is Pastor's brand new book, Igniting Your Passion for Personal Renewal and National Revival. That book is coming out this fall, but you can pre-order it this weekend. Don't miss Revival If. Oh, I can't wait to read that. I love it. And that, there it is, the book right there. Look, we're touching the top of the book right now. <laughs> that's the book that's coming out soon, so make sure you pre-order it. Absolutely. Well, you know what? If we haven't mentioned already, if you didn't know, Elisa and I are both proud graduates of Valor Christian College, and we have a very special video that we want to show you with a little bit more information. Roll it. The experience at Valor Christian College will change your life forever. A two or four year degree from this fully accredited college can set you on your destiny. The friendships you forge here will last a lifetime. 
the opportunity for unmatched ministry experience, engaging you with leaders in worldwide evangelism, ministry, and multimedia communication. Our professors develop and curate cutting-edge courses designed to give you new insights into revival-centric ministry. Call the number on your screen and ask how you can impact the world. Or enroll online right now at valorcollege.edu. With scholarships and federal financial aid available, now is the time to pursue your dreams and become a world changer. Good morning, World Harvest Church, and everyone joining us for Dominion Camp Meeting! Woo! Now listen, I know we're day three now, Elisa. Day three. Right now is when the caffeine and the coffee really starts to help you. So everyone, just put your <laughs> arms up. Let's get a nice little stretch, all right? Stretch to the right. A little Holy Ghost anointed aerobics to the left. There we go. Get that nice stretch, making sure my shirt stays down right there. Yes. All right. But we're ready. We're ready, right? We know that God is not finished yet, right? Woo! Don't we know that? We are excited for Dominion Camp Meeting. If you're excited, one more time, make some noise. Yes. Yes, I love it. We've been really getting stirred up here, praying in the spirit. I love it. It's been such an amazing, amazing time. And Cameron and I are both Valor Christian College graduates. Such an amazing experience for me. I know for Cameron, too. You met your wife at Valor. My wife got the ring by spring. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, so we want all of you to be experienced what God has for you at Valor Christian College. And I think we have some scholarships to give away. That's right. All weekend, we've been giving away World Changer scholarships, and we got some more to give away right now. Elisa, will you do the honors? All right. Our first winner is actually online from Abilene, Texas, Ruth Ann Caldwell. Congratulations. Whoop, whoop. Our second winner from our online campus, James Stewart from St. Augustine, Florida. Woo. And we've got some winners here on campus with us this weekend. Joining us from Brownsburg, Indiana is Taylor Sparks. Congratulations, Taylor. And our second in-person World Changer Scholarship winner is Jeff Baxter from Claremont, North Carolina. Congratulations, Jeff. Now, you can find out more information about the School of the Spirit, how you can be a world changer. And this isn't just for teenagers right. fresh out of high school. Right. There are adults that you can take campus and classes online to learn more about the word, like eschatology. Absolutely. And just deepen your relationship with God and then get the tools to further the kingdom. That's right. Getting that impartation. We're celebrating 30 years of legacy at Valor Christian College. Do we have any alumni of Valor in the house? Alumni? Look at all these alumni, I that's love awesome. It. Oh, there's your wife right over there. Hey, Katie, our children's director. Give it up for our Kid Harvest volunteers, Woo! right? Taking care of the kiddos during service, we love it. Now, I gotta say, Elisa, you're looking very good today oh, because that jacket perfectly matches our Dominion Camp Meeting merch. How awesome many people have already gotten some DCM merch already? Yes. So here's what we got, okay? We got all these things. Let's throw it up on the screen. We got the black Dominion Camp Meeting shirt. We have the white one. We got the hat. And we also have in limited quantities the Ghostbuster limited edition based on pastor's message right there. Now tonight, Sunday night, y'all, it's our hashtag Merch Madness. Merch Madness happening tonight. We want everyone, whatever shirt it is, whatever hat it is, we want you to deck out in your DCM merch. So make sure after service this morning, you guys pick it up. You can see right there, it's available in all foyers. Yep. And our kids have merch too. That's right, we've got our Space Camp shirts. Look at these, they look fantastic. We have orange and we have blue. So we got those and the hats for the kids. Every single kid loves to wear a rocket ship on their chest. So make sure if you have a child, get them Space Camp merch. Now, Elisa, I just, I don't like carrying I don't really stuff. want to hold this either, Cameron. I don't know what to do with this free stuff. Hmm. So we... first, I want to find out who traveled. Hmm. Let's just pick a random state. How about from the peach state of Georgia? Anyone from Georgia? Right there. Cameron's coming to give you your free shirt. Coming through, coming through, coming through. Woo! Hey, getting that run in Who's early, Who's from Georgia? Amen. Here you go. You get a hat. You get a shirt. 
Alisa, pick another random state. Let's go with the sunshine state of Florida. Florida? Oh, oh right oh, there, 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 I'm coming. There you go. All right, Cameron, pick another state. Um, I'm just gonna go Massachusetts. <laughs> right here. I'm not running, so I'll just get you your shirt when we're done. <laughs> One more state. Oh, Katie has them. One more state. Um, I don't know. Maine. Anyone from Maine? Idaho. Kansas. They're raising right. their hands everywhere. I know. Right over there. Elisa, pick another one. I'm having bad luck. All right, the last one. Let's see, do we have anyone joining us from Indiana? Whoa, all right, right there. All right, right we'll there. make sure we get you your merch. I can't run in these shoes. I got you. Sorry about that. <laughs> I can't believe you can't run in high heels. <laughs> Unbelievable. Have you guys been enjoying camp meeting? Have you guys been joining? We had Ghostbuster on Friday. We had Flip That Kingdom with Miss Medina Pulley. We had Had Dominion right here, with buddy. RJ Matthews. Amazing, amazing. We had Ron Carpenter last night. Such an amazing weekend so far. We're not done yet. You got it ready for Bishop Tudor Bismarck? What? Yes. And Harvest Music Live has been rocking this whole weekend. We enjoy the ministry of Miss Shayna Wilson Williams. Yes. And Harvest Music Live. This has been incredible. Hey, if you haven't done so already, make sure you keep posting those pictures, yes. posting those videos with the hashtag. DCM 35. I think we have a couple pictures we want to show this morning. This one from Tim as Bishop RJ Matthews was rocking the house. I'm doing the steps like RJ was doing yesterday. Here we go. Y'all know the steps? Remember that? Yes, I love that. <laughs> awesome. Oh, oh, this is yours. So during worship yesterday or while we were praying, but my watch said, looks like you're working out. Who wants to record an indoor run, right? <laughs> Lots of indoor running happened here at Summerall Tabernacle. It's great. Let's see another one. Oh, look at that one with Real Talk Kim that Sue took. Yes, That's Real Talk Kim will be with us this afternoon preaching a word. Awesome. Let's see one. Oh, look at this from Ginger, the kids. Now, do we have the little ones sleeping, guys? Because this oh, oh. <laughs> right that, there. That restful sleep, that sleep that Proverbs says you get when you are rested. Just restful soaking sleep. in the anointing yes. in their dreams. <laughs> so make sure you keep using the hashtag DCM35. And even if you feel like that, special shout out, we have Dow's Coffee House. Yes, Dow's Coffee in the House foyer. out there. <laughs> there you go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are done with our announcements, which means it is time to kick off day three of Dominion Camp Meeting. People already know what to do. Get up on your feet because Bishop Tudor Bismarck is about 50 or 60 feet behind those walls. And on the count of three, I want you guys to make some noise to get this day started. Alisa, why don't you count it down? One, two, three. Keep going. Hallelujah. <laughs> Dominion camp meeting will begin in ninety seconds.
We're gonna take it back, brother! We're gonna take the church back! We're taking the pulpits back! We're taking the airwaves back! And God Almighty is gonna back us and blow his breath into our sails! You can lock down all you want! You can't intimidate me! Here I come with a new anointing! Because for what's coming, the body of Christ is going to have to be connected. Before Jesus returns, there will be a great unity in the church. This has been a season for some of you where forces both external and internal showed up to silence your praise and squelch the noise of your faith. Get ready, because you're about to raise your volume like you've never raised it before. I'm about to get up, and when I get up, everywhere I walk, everywhere I go, my focus is going to be pulling people out of hell. This is a movement we, we plan on invading darkness. We plan on going into some dry places and bringing fresh water. This is a move. You got to praise your way and think your way back out the door after you've let God know. Praise your way in, pray, and then you got to praise your way back out. We are remnant, revenant, resurrected, relevant, revivalists. That's who we are. Dominion Camp Meeting. Happy Sunday morning. Are we ready to bless the Lord together? Type yeah, shout yeah, let's go. Come on, hands on it. Gates are open and they never will run dry. Lord, rain. Lord, we want you to rain. Come on, sing it out with us. There's a river running and they never will run dry. Lord, rain. Sing it out. Lord, rain. We know the floodgates are open, yes.
up a big praise this Sunday morning. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We celebrate your greatness. No God like our God. Can you shout amen?
Jehovah, you're good and we won't stop praising. All together. Great Jehovah, you're good and we won't stop praising. Through it all, through it all, you're still great Jehovah. You're good and we won't stop even while you're walking through what you're walking through, say great. Great Jehovah, you're good and we won't stop praising. 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 That's a declaration right there. We won't stop. We won't stop. Now make it personal, and I won't stop praising. Huh? And I won't stop praising. Devil, you can't have what belongs to my God, and I won't stop praising. Devil, you can't have what belongs to my God, and I won't stop praising. God, you've been so good, you've been so good. Somebody walk down memory lane this morning and think of how good God is. If you're able, you're good, and we won't stop praising. Hallelujah! Cause you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Somebody who's walked with him and knows it. For from you are all things, <laughs> and to you are Say, we deserve. You deserve the glory. We give it to you. We give it to you. You're worthy of it all. Say, you're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all.
Lord, we give you what we owe you. This room is filled, online is filled with people who are grateful for your goodness. Our Father hears us, and He's in the room. Come on, tell them now. And all fear is gone. Say that again. All fear is gone. Look at your neighbor and say, it's in the room. It's in the room. It's in the room. Our Father hears us. Father hears And he's in the room. And oh. It's in the room. 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 It's on my room. Hey! It's in my back. My God. It's at my home. Come on, woman of God. It's at my job. Come on, woman of God. It's in my marriage. It's in my promotion. It's in my family. The curse is broke. Sickness is gone. Poverty is gone. Gone. Because he's in the room. Because he's in the room. He walked in the room. When I woke up, I had no doubt that the Lord would meet me. That's right. In the room. In the room. It's the third day of Dominion Camp. Whatever was there in your life is now alive. Peace be here. Joy be here. Victory be here. Come alive, promise. Come alive, promise. Hey! Yes, It's in the room. You better weigh down your rope and say it showed up. It showed up. It showed up. I saw you coming on Friday. I saw you come on Saturday. And you said, God, I need a word. I need a touch. And on Sunday, before I leave, I need you to show up. Tell your neighbor it's in the room. Think about myself because when the enemy came in like a flood, you lift a standard against him. Though the enemy was encamped around me, you went before me, you went behind me, you was on the side, you was Jesus, 
the whole time. The whole time. It was Jesus the whole time. And if you are a guest of ours, first time here or first time in a long time, we're so glad that you are with us. Let's let them know how glad we are. Yeah. We would love the opportunity to connect with you. And here's how you can help us do that. At your seat. 
There is a card. If you'll take a moment now and fill out that card. Get that card. You're a guest today. Grab that card. Fill it out. And then later on in the service, when the ushers come by for the offering, you can put it in the container at that time. Now listen, you don't only get to connect with us, but you also get a gift. You better get to writing. Amen. Our pastor and first family have something very special that we are going to mail to you just for filling it out and turning it in. Amen? Amen. Well, listen, our pastor has been deeply honored all week by the presence of the apostle of biblical economics who has changed the lives of millions of people. Please help us welcome to this platform, Dr. John Avanzini. My, 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 praise God. Let me have a look at you. Tell that person near to you that Brother John thinks it look real nice. Would you do that? Hold on, hold on, uh, hold, hold, hold. Put a little Texas on that, real nice. Give it a little nice. Glory to God. It's an honor to be here. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I take just a few minutes and point a few things out to you. This book that we have called the Bible, it is a unique book. It is an unusual book. It's a book where stones can talk and praise God. It's a, good, it's a book where donkeys can talk. It's a book where ax heads can swim. It's a, day, it's a book that the sun can stand still right in the middle of the day. It's a time when a burning bush can burn and never be consumed. You know, I've found this about my great God. He always operates an unusual program. And if you're into doing what you usually do, you're going to miss him because he does not act on the usual, but he acts when the unusual takes place. Something unusual takes place. I can't help think, but in scriptures, as we see different times that unusual things took place. I think about a time that a young virgin girl was walking in a field and a, an angel comes and talks to her and says to her, I'd like for you to have a baby with no husband. Now, what's the usual answer to that? No, thank you. Please step back. Stay away from me. But an unusual answer came. And that unusual answer was, let it be unto me according to your words. And before John the Baptist died, he said, this woman will be known as the greatest woman that ever lived. I think about other places where unusual things happened. A blind man one day, as the Lord comes and has made gritty mud out of his spittle and some sand from the earth, and his eyes are such sensitive eyes being blind. But as he comes, he says, can I put this mud in your eyes? And I can hear the response from the average person. No, no, get back. Move this man away from me. But an unusual answer comes. He says, yes. <laughs> and as he touches him, he leaves that night with a technicolor view of a sunset as the Lord God restores his sight. I think again, and oh, this one's the hardest one I ever saw. It's a time when he spit on his finger and said, open your mouth. I'm going to put your tongue with this spit. <laughs> What's the usual response to that? Oh, no, no, no. Get this man away from me. He's crazy. But child of God, that man said, oh, <laughs> and he touched his lips and he left speaking like an orator. Oh, child of God, I hope you can catch what I'm trying to say to you. As long as you make that usual response. And you know, Sunday morning is a day when so much tradition takes place. Oh, what are you saying, Brother John? Well, we usually park about the same place in the lot. And we usually try to find the same seat in the church. And we've already got our envelope all made out. And we've got uh, uh, many of us already electronically done our giving. But child of God, hear me. 
nothing's going to change when you do the usual. I come this morning I'm just candidly with you in a meeting like this. If I'm sitting in the room and visiting in a church, I keep a few hundred dollar bills and I'll put a hundred dollars in the offering plate. But I said, Lord, I want something to happen. I want something to happen in this meeting. And so I made my check out for ten for a thousand dollars. Excuse me, last night, night before I made ten thousand. But you're in the room right now, and you're about to do what you usually do at offering time. And I'm just going to encourage you to step into a whole new dimension. Do something unusual. And even this day, something's already going to start happening in your finances. There's going to be some mortgages that are going to be canceled. I speak the truth to you right in this house now. But it's not going to happen if you do what you usually do. But if you'll do something unusual, there's mortgages will fall. And don't think, listen, that word mortgage, be careful with it. You know what it means? Death grip. Morgue, death, and gauging the grip. There's a death grip on your house. There's a death grip on your automobile. But the right move in this offering could take that right out of your life. The unusual response, God will touch. Child of God, I, 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 I just thank him so much for this opportunity to stand here. But it would be a wasted moment if you didn't hear what I'm saying. Several hundred people come up to me and say, over the years, you've blessed me with your message on finances. Well, the anointing that I have carried through the earth, billions of dollars have been raised that God has let me raise up. And that same anointing is in the house today. I'm in my 86th year. I don't know. I don't know how often again we'll meet, but we're together today in that same anointing that has moved billions into the kingdom of God is here now. If you will just do something unusual, take that gift that you're planning to give. It'd be a good time to double it. Some of you have never on a Sunday morning given a thousand dollars. And I speak to you, do that unusual thing. And you see how quickly God will move in the 30 fold, the 60 fold, and even into the hundred fold realm. And I want to speak even a blessing. And I speak now to that, those are online. Please know that very unusual things could happen online today. Each one of you could go to that instruction that you have on the screen before you, and you could give into this, into this offering, and you could see changes in your finances. We're crying today about inflation. We're crying today about all these financial problems, shortages. But let me say this, if you can get God in your finances, if you can get the unusual move of the Lord Jesus Christ stirring your money, it'll stay ahead of inflation. You'll stay way ahead of inflation. And not only that, but there'll be more than enough. And I thank God for his promise for you. If we just will move into the unusual this morning, Make that offering so unusual. God says it'll come to you exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. And it can happen right here in this place. Now, I don't know. My wife last year, a month ago last year, uh, uh, a month, the, this month coming, went on into heaven. She told me, don't keep me waiting too long. So I don't know when the next time I'll be with me, maybe in a cloud somewhere, but I'm here today. And the word I speak today is that a hundredfold increase comes across this room, not to everyone, but to everyone that will move into the unusual with your offering. And I speak even those that are online, this is that opportunity to have the miracles that you see in this room waft into your room and touch your life and change your finances. In the name of Jesus, I speak this offering is multiplied exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. The ones that come with an unusual gift today 
it comes to them rapidly multiplied in the strong name of Jesus. It's blessed. Amen. Thank you, sir. Ushers, ushers, would you wait on the people? Thank you, sir. God bless you as you give today, and please enjoy the music ministry of Harvest Music Live and Miss Carrie Higgins. To the one who lives forever Hello he El Shaddai You are Alpha and Omega Jehovah, I don't know, to the one with eyes like fire, to the one who demons fear, to the one
the Lord. Believe the power of God is coming to make you strong. You are weak now, but you are strong. Arise in the power of your might. Get up right now. Get strength in your life. Get strength in your being. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I have waited three years. I waited seven years to be able to shout. So go ahead and shout for me. One of the great tragedies of my generation and those coming after me is a loss of honor. There isn't much that is held in high esteem anymore. We have made the holy things of God far too common. This is not a common place. This is not a common pulpit and it's not a stage it's a pulpit and this is not a sanctuary it is a tabernacle and your body is the temple of God himself his sacred dwelling place when we lose honor we lose the power of sacredness something set apart for purpose. Our God is completely powerful because he is absolutely other, separate. And believe it or not, God is not just all about you. Before, the intergalactic nebula was spoken into being. He was God. The great Spurgeon said, I see unborn ages proceeding out of the being of God. We don't hallow him enough. The message has been deficit because the messengers have not been separate. I don't need another friend in a pulpit. I need a man, I need a woman that when their presence comes, it is his presence and my head is lowered i am in awe of true sanctified consecrated men and women of god i have been since i was old enough to walk so let's not go along with the mores of either the natural culture or the church culture. Let's have Bible culture. Such a man as will greet you in a moment comes along carrying such a mantle in my estimation a handful every 100 years i studied them those that preached in the 13th century in the 14th century bishop tudor bismarck is not a man 
for the hour nor the day. He is a man of a century. And I am humbled to have the great pleasure to welcome him again to the pulpit of Dominion Camp Meeting. Would you join me and give honor to God's servant, God's servant, the incomparable Bishop Tudor Bismarck. Everybody put your hands together in praise to the Lord for all the things he has done. Amen. <laughs> to uh, Pastor Rock Parsley, who is probably, again, part of a handful of individuals that carries the entire Ephesians 4.11 gift because there are many moments he walks as an apostle, definitely prophetic, evangelistic all the time, he is America's giant pastor and a phenomenal teacher. And uh, greetings to you, sir, and to your wonderful family, Aston, God bless you, amen and to all the leadership of uh, World Harvest Church and the custodians of uh, Dominion Camp Meeting. God bless all of you. Congratulations on 35 years of world-changing ministry. Uh, Chi Chi couldn't be with us on this trip, so I'm traveling with our son, Dream. He's the oldest of four. That's Dream, father of twins. I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 7. And while you're turning there, allow me to greet everybody that's online, in particular Chi Chi who's watching and praying and hopefully will be dancing. Yes. Yes. Uh, to Jason and Tadiwa Amelia, to TJ Lashan, and to a host of people in Africa that are watching. Uh, God bless all of you. Allow me to appreciate and honor Dr. Avanzini, who um, taught us the way, taught us the way. Uh, many of the economic challenges that we face in our part of the world we have been able to avert the natural course of, course of challenges due to the economic challenges, but uh, your word has sustained us for decades. We honor you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, Mama needs to wait just a little longer because the world really needs your gift and your sphere of uh, authority and dominion. God bless you. Amen. Maestro, it's good to see you. Nothing has changed except the whiteness of your beard. <laughs> Amen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2 verse 7 and then John chapter number 1. 50 minutes and we should be done. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained. 
before the glory, before the world, to our glory. So there is the glory of man. This building has been built to the glory of man, to the greater glory of God. Verse number eight, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen. nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things, plural, which God has prepared for them that love him. If you love the Lord, there are things that have been prepared for you. John 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was nothing made that was made. Verse 12, verse 12, but as many, as many as received Him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for dominion. We thank you for World Harvest Church. We thank you for the apostle of this house and their team. Bless in Jesus' name, amen. My message title this morning is... I want it all. I want it all. Turn to your name and say, I want it all. I, I want it. I want it all. I want it all. Everything that we see in the physical world has been adopted and adapted from the spiritual sphere, which is constant. Right now in the atmosphere above us are thousands of things moving faster than the speed of light towards us. Many things are moving at the speed of thought. And so in a meeting like this, where there are dimensions of anointings, gifts, uh, rewards, answers, as they're flying, you have to just grab at least one thing. Don't try to grab it all, just grab one thing and hold on to that as a promise that God will fulfill within the next 24 hours, within the next week, in a month, in a year, in a decade. There I was watching a young lady on the stage, worshiping and energetic, and my, how it brought such memories of when we began. Uh, this year we celebrate 50 years of being a Christian. 50 years. Some hippies, converted hippies out of Kenneth Phillips Church in Austin, Texas, came to Zimbabwe in their very, very young years. Sue Ferris is still alive and probably watching today and uh, brought the gospel to our family. I was 15 and a half, 16 in 1972. And then in 1974 began preaching. And uh, I was watching her enthusiasm and her energy and I thought, oh, how I'd give a hundred bucks or more 
just to jump like that. <laughs> and the hymn comes to mind, Precious Memories. <laughs> but there are things that are constant. There are things that change all the time. Things that are constant, that are unchanging. The Word of God is one of those anchors that never changes. Interpretations change from time to time, place to place, culture to culture, season to season. But the constant, the consistency of the Word of God is what remains from generation to generation. And from that Word we build our faith. Without faith it is impossible to please God. And so God will then allow us in seasons to see something that changes our lives. What you see, you be. God allows us to hear something that changes our lives because faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the application of the rhema word that we receive. And so for some, the word that goes out today is just rudimentary. For others, it would be a rhema that forever shifts and changes your life. And I pray that you get such a rhema at Dominion. And so the Apostle Paul, who is arguably one of the five greatest minds of all time, addresses a church he started in chapter number 18 of the book of Acts. And it is in this chapter where uh, Paul has been on a mission and starts uh, in the Macedonian area, comes to a town, a city town called Corinth, which entertained so much debauchery and so much abominable actions. And uh, Paul gets there and the Lord talks to him and says, you must remain in Corinth for I have many, many people here. And so it's not like there aren't many people anywhere else, but the reason uh, Paul had to remain there is because in Corinth itself is the book of 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. It's not so much about the people, and yes it is, but it's about what that people group as a treasure had hidden in them. Because in Corinth, and you can go through the entire 1 and 2 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul addresses some significant fundamental doctrines, teachings, and positions of which, of course, we'll have the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, rank, the chapter of great love, eschatological uh, positioning, and, and such like. And so the Apostle Paul starts his uh, writings to the Corinthians and commends them. He calls them the church of God at Corinth, sanctified, set apart, called to be saints. And uh, he says, this grace has been given to you. And then he says that in everything, we want you to be enriched and we want all utterance, every expression of utterance, the plethora of expressions from uh, a human standpoint into a spiritual standpoint, we want that to be released in you. And he says, the reason I want to uh, speak to you regularly is that you do not come behind in any gift. Please say, I will not come behind in any gift. <laughs> it's very easy, it's very easy for believers that were raised in World Harvest Church or uh, are accustomed to Dominion Camp Meeting, it's very easy 
for you to worship and raise your hands, but all over the world today, from the first time zones past New Zealand to the last time zone past Hawaii, there will be millions of Christians gathered together, and a very few will have the kind of freedom and the kind of, uh, uh, I, I guess I want to say, expressions of, of spiritual excitement. Many will go into a church where there will be no praise and worship. There will be no expressive worship. I saw my brother get up and sprint, amen. Uh, that's usually not seen in traditional Orthodox churches. And each one will go there and not experience the power of God. It's a form of godliness, will not experience the power of God. And it's very easy. I mean, where's my little sister that's a total animal? You are a total Jurassic Park on your own. You are totally abnormal. I'm sure you have four lungs, I'm absolutely certain. And, uh, but the privilege of being in such an anointing is not experienced by millions of Christians around the world. And it's very easy to take for granted, to take for granted things that come so naturally to you. I mean, you've been with, with the Harvest for how many years? All your life? Of course. And so, can you imagine doing this in a Methodist church in England that has four people? <laughs> in England right now, they are, in Europe, there are 4,000 Methodist churches up for sale right now. And different uh, groups are purchasing those churches from the Islamic world, there's a grocery store called Sainsbury's and Tesco in the UK that are buying these buildings. They are different lifestyles. I won't say too much that are buying these buildings and creating apartments out of them. And, and so we're trying to put money together as a group, as African leaders, to maybe save what Wesley began. Thousands of buildings that are being thrown away. And literally, you know, Papa Adibuya of the Redeemed Church had gone to worship on a Sunday outside of a Redeemed Church in the UK and went to a Methodist church where nobody knew him. And uh, he thought he was too early, and then he realized that uh, he was just one of five people plus the vicar and the priest there, and it broke his heart. Because in Lagos, the Redeemed Church, their campground is three kilometers long and three kilometers wide and gather millions of people unrestrained in worship. And the last time we were there, uh, and I'd written on my notes, no stories, but it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you're 65 years old, you've got a little bit to say. But I stood on the platform uh, which is like two and a half stories high, seats 5,000 people. And during my water call, I watched, because my favorite color is orange, and I watched a, a man run from way back. They looked like a dot run towards the altar. The altar space was over, is over 150 yards long and a kilometer wide. And I watched the offering being picked up in drums, dumped into pickup trucks, taken to the back to be counted. It takes 10 days, 5,000 people counting a, an offering, 10 days per evening offering. And it's pretty stunning being in a place like that. And it's so easy for people who are accustomed to that to go to a church that doesn't have any of that, and, and, and churches that have come behind in great gifts. And so in this room, resident, as the Apostle Paul so clearly pointed out, are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. They are here, they are resident. 
many times suppressed, many times not encouraged, many times not pushed. And so the utterance gets usually get the lion's share of the platforms. And the deeper gifts that are so necessary of demonstration are totally ignored. But that will not be so in this place because I want it all. I want the gifts of wisdom, the gifts of knowledge, discerning of spirits, working of miracles, faith, diverse gifts of healing, prophecy, tongues and interpretation, diverse kinds of tongues. I want it all. Amen. I want it all. I want the uh, gifts of my soul prospering. And I want to be in health. I want to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And it is possible to have it all. It is possible to have it all. And somehow, somewhere between Thursday and tonight, somebody is gonna get a piece of having it all. You will not come behind in any great gift. Say, I will not come behind in any great gift. How the world so needs, how America, America so needs the gospel. America needs an expression of real church. America needs a demonstration. America needs revival. America needs an awakening of intercessory prayer. America needs midwives to stand up somewhere and be counted. America needs to stand for what is right and for what is true. And God is, Bishop Matthews, thank you so much, but America is raising up a generation of strong men and women who will not take no for an answer who will wrestle God all the way until God will yield His blessing to you. God hides His wisdom, He hides His gifts in plain sight. And He hides it in people that are so ordinary, sitting right next to you, who just with the touch of anointing will explode into the expression of what God really wants. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. And so then we have to be really, really persuaded. We have to be persuaded. And so I want to uh, touch a couple of things before we get to the message here. The apostle talks about, uh, in his writing to the Corinthians, that you don't come behind in any great gift. And in various epistles, for example, Ephesians 1.21, Colossians 1, 16, he talks about thrones and dominions and so on. And in chapter number 12 of uh, 2 Corinthians, he talks about being in the spirit and he talks about being caught up into the third heaven. And uh, he says, God told him, you know, my grace is sufficient for you. And so God kicks him back into the first heaven. And so, sisters and brothers, there are seven heavens. And so each heaven has a, a throne where cases and petitions are brought. And so the lowest, the, the lowest uh, level of the heavens is the level of grace, the throne of grace. If you need grace to help in time of need, you can come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain that. And so for every believer, no matter who you are, you can come to the Lord, approach the throne of grace, and God will give you grace to help in time of need. And so you can carry, you can carry an impediment where God will not heal that impediment because that affliction keeps you close to God. Every person will have access to the throne of grace. His grace is sufficient. He will supply your need. He will make sure that you're taken care of. He will bless you, but that's the throne of grace. And so there are times when we are asking God to do certain things that the throne of grace does not handle. It is a lower court. The higher court is God's sovereign court in the seventh heaven 
where legal issues are decided and granted. That court doesn't sit all the time. That court doesn't preside all the time. Even though God is omnipotent, even though God is omniscient, even though God is omnikinetic, omni, omnibus, God does not open the, the supreme court to judge on issues all the time. So for example, in Job chapter number one, the Bible says God called for the court to be opened. And all players concerning the universe was summoned to that meeting, including Lucifer. And when the, the, the hearing was done and God passed his judgment on whatever issue, God had a side conversation with Lucifer and asked him if he considered Job. And so what happened was Job was functioning in an abnormal, extraordinary realm of grace. God placed him in this realm of grace and blessed him above all people in the earth. Blessed his finances, blessed his family, seven sons and three daughters, all ten for each one for a commandment. God blessed them. He sacrifices in the morning, his sacrifices in the evening were acknowledged by God. And so he was then wiped out completely, taken out completely by a demonic attack. And so when you come to Job 42, when the Supreme Court opens again, the Bible said that God considered Job's plight and God blessed Job, gave him twice as much as he had from the beginning. And in the last few verses, the 10 sons, uh, rather the seven sons and the three daughters are now named. But for the first time, his three daughters are given names and give, given equal inheritance to the boys. And the last girl's name is uh, uh, Fozia Cassia, uh, which means black diamond. And, and they get the same benefits, the same property, the same gift, because there comes a time in a space where God quantifies a human being and says, yes, you are a woman, and yes, you may have been left behind, but in a level playing field like this, everybody gets what they want. And I want it all. I want it all. Because I'm rich, Chi-Chi is rich too. Because I'm blessed, Chi-Chi is blessed too. And so in a meeting like this, according to your faith, according to the grace in the house, you get everything that has been spoken here for 35 years, over and over and over. Promises, promises that you have forgotten, words that you will never capture but are kept in the Supreme Court so that when a trial comes, a trial, a trial, which is legal jargon, a trial, when a trial comes your way, it means that your trial, your case is being thrown into the heavens. And when God sits, takes his gavel, he says, I rule on behalf of Mike. He gets the money, he gets the girl, he gets the sunset, he gets the Rolex, he gets the phantom, he gets the jet, he gets health, he gets strength, he gets the diamond ring, he gets a John Avanzini on a Sunday morning. The devil is a liar, so is his mother-in-law. It's on here this morning. I came to announce in Columbus at Dominion 2-2, I want it all. Oh, Vincent Blennis, if you can hear me in South Africa, if you believe that, slap your TV, give someone a fist bump, and shout, I want it all. I'm not coming behind in any gift. The gift that you have, God can give that gift to me as well. Now, Dream told me before church, he said, please don't sing because you can't sing, but I'll sing like my little sister over there. Tell someone, say, I want it all. Yeah. 
And so during camp meeting in the season, today, the Supreme Court in heaven is sitting. And God is going to grant petitions and requests that some of you have been laboring for for decades. You've been sitting in a house for 12 years with an issue of blood. Today is your day. You've been bent over for 18 years. Today, today is your day. Jairus, today is your day. Lazarus, today is your day. Widow at Nain, today is your day. Little boy with five loaves and two fishes, today is your day. You are going to hear things and see things in your spirit that were recorded when God first spoke in the eons of time. Shout, I want it all. I don't know what God said about me from the beginning of the world, but I got a hint from Job 38 because my spirit was there when God spoke today. And so instinctively, I feel it in my spirit that Tudor Bismarck had to be here today. I had to be here today because only this place, only this space could give me what all of eternity was waiting to hand to me. And so my spirit is open, my heart is open, and I'm taking it because shout, I want it all. I need about 2,000 people to clap your hands as something begins to mold here. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Sisters and brothers, it's hard to know what you want. If you don't know what you want looks like, if you know what you want really looks like, you can put your hand towards it and say, that's what I want. I was doing a prayer walk in Harare many years ago, and I didn't have a motor vehicle. And I stepped off Samora Michelle into 4th Street with tears in my eyes. And I didn't see a Mercedes Benz that had, it's the first series that had the indicator lights in the mirror. And I stepped into the street and that Mercedes Benz mirror hit me on my side. I, I was petrified that I was almost run over. But that little moment when that uh, mirror hit my side, that incident caused me that moment to believe that I could own a Mercedes Benz. That moment caused me to believe that I'd have a garage that could have a car of that caliber. Everything in the universe is calculated mathematically. The whole world is about maths. Faith is about maths. Being here is about maths and the math has aligned a dominion this morning. And the equation is going to be solved of the problems that you have faced all of your life. God is balancing the accounts this morning. Your liabilities have been way too high. So God's about to add something on your, on your, on your asset register. He's about to add on your asset register, houses and lands, mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, treasures, clothing, spiritual blessing in high places. The accounts are being balanced today. You will not go into deficit from today forward. My goodness, you're coming to July 4th, Independence Day. God's about to cut you off from being dependent on so many things you thought you had to have. But it's independence now, and I'm going for broke, and I'm taking it all, and I want it all, and I receive it all. In the name of Jesus, the blessing of the Lord is making someone wealthy, blessed, shaken together, running over. Ah! Come on, Holy Ghost. Shout three times, I want it all. Come on, let all of Ohio hear that you want it all. Let America hear you want it all. Let the 
principalities and powers here that you won it all. Let hell shake. Let heaven reverberate. Let the earth regurgitate. I want it all. I want it all. I want it all. I want it all. Keep going to praise somebody. John was a teenager when he started following Jesus. He was washing nets with his dad. And Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Shout, God is making me. Oh, yes, he is. He's making me. Be patient with me. Because God is still making me. He's making me. I said, God is making you. Ah, San Antonio, get ready for what God is making. I have somebody here from Indiana. Be patient because God is making you. I'm not what I used to be, but God is making me. He is molding me for a great anointing in my town. Can you feel that thing rolling up in here? Oh, Lord, make me, shape me, direct me, guide me. Turn to your neighbor, say, God is making me. In the beginning was the Word. Oh, yes, my Word began in eternity, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And so God then made the Word for you and me and is dwelling among us. Look after that gift, amen. Look after that little sister, you know what I'm saying? Or else I'll come with a Zimbabwe stick and show you how to look after my little sister. <laughs> Say, God is making me. Say, God is making me. Use your first name and say, Tudor, God is making you. Tudor, God is making you. Another time. Tudor, God is making you. I, I sense my direction. I sense my, 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 my anointing and my gift. I, I can't put my hands around it, but I realize that something great is being orchestrated in my life and for my life I, I know it's been said something great is about to happen but it's hard to define what something is if you don't know what something is it's hard to possess something if you don't know what it looks like but my mind is open to whatever God has for me and whatever it is God I'm open whether it's pain or suffering, I'm open to that. On Friday, it will be a year since our son passed away and it's been a very difficult year. But last year before he passed, I was impressed to go on a huge 30-day uh, fast and I didn't understand what the reason for that was. But God said to me, you, you have to drink this cup. And I said, God, the cup is too bitter and it's too challenging. But I couldn't understand what the cup actually meant. And when Bernstein passed away last year, I wasn't at home. And Chi Chi and the boys carried all of that by themselves. Amen, be careful what you ask for because God might just give it to you. And so in that particular journey, as we've been walking through and, and functioning through, 
and believing God through. He has things that have been prepared that we fully don't comprehend and understand. I was doing the math in my head and saying, oh God, give me strength to live to at least Dr. Evanzini's age. Imagine when I was born, he was 21 years old, teaching the gospel, teaching prosperity and blessing. And so in moments when I'm tired and I'm weary, I'll be looking at the ambassador of God and saying, God, no complaint, all his hair, all his teeth, walking upright. I want to be like that when I grow up. Someone's got to say amen. And so walk it out and work it out and live it out. Because as you come towards possessing all things, God will give you the power to become. To as many as received him, he gave the power to become. So he gives you the power to become a believer. He gives you the power to become an entrepreneur. He gives you the power to become a minister of the gospel. He gives you the power to be an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, and a teacher. He gives you the power to be a deacon or an elder. He gives you the power to carry your praise, to sing at midnight, to come unscathed. He gives you the power to open heaven. He gives you the power to shut hell. He gives you the power to open doors. He gives you the power to face evil. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In the middle of that verse, lead me not into temptation. But if I go into temptation, he gives me the power to overcome that temptation by finding the way of escape. Yea, though I walk through the valley, I'm walking through the valley. I'm not stopping to take a selfie or take a moment of observation. I'm walking through to the other side because when I get through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm coming into the holiest of holies. And what was planned for me from the beginning that I hasn't seen, nor ear heard, nor my heart be able to conceive, God has it there waiting for me. And so if Absalom's arrive in my life, I'm still going to be on the throne. If Saul chases me through the wilderness, I'll still be in the promise of God. If my brothers sell me to Ishmaelites and I land up in part of his house, and land up in prison, the vision he gave me as a boy will so come to pass. It's not over because my eyes haven't seen what God has promised me. My ears haven't heard what God has spoken. So I'm pressing towards that mark. I'm pressing towards that moment because in my life, I will wear that coat of many colors. My brothers who sold me out will still bow down to me. So in the midst of a beating in prison, have your brothers bowed yet? They haven't bowed. I'm not dying. Have your brothers confessed that you are mighty? They haven't confessed it yet. So today is not my day to depart because my eye hasn't seen it and my ear hasn't heard it until my eye sees it and until my ear hears it. I'm not going anywhere. And up until that point, I feel like preaching now. Up until that point, I want it all. I want it all until my eyes until my eyes see it until my eyes see it until my eyes see it tell someone you're about to see it you're about to possess it you're about to hear it your faith is about to grab it every mountain that's standing in your way Someone yell at that mountain, get out of my way, get out of my way, every mountain, get out of
of my way. Every stumbling block become a stepping stone. Yeah, yes. Hallelujah. God has given me the power to tread on serpents. He's given me the power to have revelation knowledge. He's given me the power for limitless thinking. He's given me the power for extraordinary achievements. Oh yes, he's given me the power to climb to heights of prosperity. I heard David say in Psalm 67, verse number five, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then, then shall the earth yield its increase. I'm talking to the earth. Vomit my increase. Regurgitate my blessing. Cough up what belongs to me. Give back what the enemy stole from me. I want it all in the name of Jesus. Woo! Give someone a high five. Give someone a high five and say you're getting it all today. Oh, e flat. to know how to receive the Bible says to as many as received him to them he gave the power to become shout Lord I receive be done unto me according to your word shout Lord I receive oh yes I receive Every person here has received. You received from your grandparents or great-grandparents. You received from your parents. Whether it's good or bad, you've been on the receiving end. Shout, Lord, I receive. Amen. I want to be able to receive. You received from your school teacher in junior school from your teacher in middle school, from your professor in university or technical college. You receive from the natural world and also from the spiritual world. You received from a moment in time. Shout, I want it all. You received from gifted people and not so gifted people. We fly out somewhere tomorrow and a pilot will be flying me somewhere. I receive his gift to get me there. Some lady will offer me a drink and a peanut. I'll receive it from that person. I'll get to Houston. I love the hot weather. I can't take air conditioning. The hotter the better, but I'll take any weather you've got. I receive it, amen. 
Oh yes, I wish I could grow some hair like Pastor Parsley has. Amen. But if I get a John King hairstyle, I'll receive that. But I'll take a bald head with a Kango cap any day. If you got a Harley Davidson cap, medium size, I'll take that too. Let me preach in my ostrich king. Oh yes, boots I got in San Antonio. Can I preach to someone here who's been in deep anticipation? You said that this is your conference, that this is your meeting, that this is your anointing. Yokes are about to break. Burdens are about to be lifted. Anointing's about to be embraced. I said the devil is a liar. So I receive, I receive from gifts. I receive from the universe. I receive from every apostle of God. Come on, Judah. I receive from the archangels in this room, from the cherubims in this room, from the multitude of angels ascending and descending. There's a ladder right there by the sound desk and angels are ascending and descending, bringing gifts to every person here. You don't have to be a first time visitor to get a gift pack. Oh yes, a gift pack is coming from the angels for every person in the room. A gift to enrich your marriage, a gift to bless your children, a gift to expand your business, a gift to expand your ministry, a gift for the power of God, a gift for the anointing of the Holy Ghost, a gift to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to open blind eyes. Oh yes, oh yes, I receive, I receive faith. I receive faith to help me in a time of need. I receive my heart being enlarged. I receive the glory of the mighty God. I receive the power of the mighty God. I receive you. There are many people in Corinth that God has assigned great gifts. You have come to the holy convocation of the mighty God in this place. This is not a church service. It's a holy convocation where deaths are canceled. It's a holy convocation where slaves are set free. It's a holy convocation where land is given back. It's a holy convocation where the oil is running down. It's a holy convocation where the incense is rising up. It's a holy convocation of the blessing of the Lord. Clap your hands, somebody. I 
I want it all. Everybody standing. Time is spent. I want it all. I was just uh, not trying to force a word, you know, not trying to force anything. So at about 4.30 this morning, I just hopped out of bed, put on my running stuff and did about, uh, it was like seven miles thinking about the service. And a word just came in my head. that God is giving you a suspended sun, a suspended sun. The sun will not move. The moon has not been authorized to rise in your life. The moon has to stay in the valley because he's given you a suspended sun. And your day, like Joshua, is being expanded in health and in strength beyond the years of Apostle Avanzini. And with that suspended sun, in that moment of that suspended sun, you're going to do a lot more than the entire 20th century of ministry. All the greats, I saw some of their chairs. All of that is like compressing the entire ocean into a thimble and better years. Greater years, more significant years are emerging. We're both 1957 boys, the best year that God has given. The rest of you just stay and line up. But for everyone in this room, raise your right hand and say in the name of Jesus, what my eyes have not seen, I still claim it. What my ears have not heard, I still possess it. And so you could be like the two spies hiding in Rahab's place. And Rahab tells you and says, we've been watching you for 40 years and trembling and wondered why you didn't come and take the city. And so why didn't the Lord lead two men to Rahab in the first of 40 years, so they could hear what Rahab said. And Rahab saw what Israel did and desired that for 40 years. She became a consort at the age of 13, 14, and waited 40 years for a promise that may have passed her. But because I hadn't seen and ear hadn't heard of all the people in Jericho, they went to Rahab. And Rahab married a prince. And out of Rahab comes the Messiah. Regardless of where your life has been and what you've been through, even if your eyes haven't seen, you sense it's there. That right and again say, Lord, I receive it all. Lord, I want it all. In the name of Jesus, put your hands together, amen. Congratulations on 35 years. God bless you. Man of God.
I told you. Did I lie? I told you. Do you believe me? Every person, without thinking, without hesitating, we're going to give it all. You, you screamed and shouted, I want it all. Then you got to make some room. You got to let go of something to make room for everything. You've got to start something that's already finished. So everything you reached out for, everything in the kingdom of God begins, moves in, and culminates with a seed. If anyone, any ministry, I want to help purchase those Methodist churches back. John Wesley said, I do not fear that the people called Methodists will ever cease to exist. But said he, I do fear that in their existing, they become a dead sect, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. I think they are moving out so we can move in. I want to buy one. I said, I want to buy one. World Harvest London. I want to buy one. I want to buy one. And I'm going to because it's in my future. I may not have seen it. I may not have heard it. But it's in my future. Seven years ago when I got that diagnosis, I said, no, no. I have promises yet to be fulfilled. I have word. I speak to you now. No prophetic word ever spoken over your life will fall to the earth void of power. It shall be as he said. Throw both hands up and say, be it unto me according to your word. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Well, thank him then. Every person be seated. Every person online around the world. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for participating, for not being a spectator, but a participant. Not, you're not left out. You're not left behind. You heard this word. It was for you. You're going to get it all. Say, I want it all. Don't even say, I want it all back, because back's coming. But there's a whole lot you haven't seen and you haven't heard that's on your way, on its way to you. Listen to me. The three anointings of receiving from a prophet, he prophesied your future. The three anointings that will come. Something you had but lost is coming back, but not the way it left. Multiply, increased, greater. If you got an X, the one that's on its way ain't that one. You lost some members, the ones coming back ain't like that bunch that left. You lost some money, you lost a thousand dollars, 
Don't look for a thousand dollars back. Thirty thousand, sixty thousand, hundred thousand. Shout is coming back. It's coming back. It's on its way. It may be here before I get home. It may show up next week, next month, next year, but it's coming. What is the devil going to do with a bunch of people that know they shall have it? That bus is coming. You understand? That women's clinic in Los Angeles, California has already left heaven. It's on its way. And that baby is coming right on time. Unlike anything you've ever seen heretofore. Mmm. Mmm. Every preacher, you don't even need it, but you want it because I don't serve a need meeting God. His first miracle was not of need. They didn't need wine. They could have drank water, Kool-Aid, but they wanted wine. And in his very first miracle, he said to every one of his, us, I am not a need meeting God. I'm a want and desire releasing God. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? You want a new facility? Yes. You want a new home? Yes. You want to give more to missions this year than ever in your life? Yes. You want a new campus? Yes. You need a rental property? Yes. Shout something I lost is coming back. Secondly, a promise that you have in the book that you have never put your hand on. How many of you know something in the 1,166 pages of that book you want? No one? You don't want the gift of prophecy. You don't want the gift of tongues. You don't want interpretation of tongues. You don't want the working of miracles. You don't want discerning of spirits. What do you want? You don't want your kids saved. You don't want to go home and that teenager you left at home this morning meet you at the front door with tears streaming off their face saying while you were gone a 12-foot angel showed up in here uh, you're not natural people you're not abnormal people living in a normal world you are normal people living in an that shout this is my moment something in that book that you never put your hand on. Dreams. The church is poverty stricken for spiritual dreams and visions. You should be having them every other night. In your sleep. Get my series back there on dreams and visions. God directs you in spiritual dreams and visions. It's not just for crazy people. There are crazy people that say they have them, but that the, a counterfeit is only proof of the real. I'm not gonna stop having mine cause you crazy. Thirdly, something you have never, have you noticed the theme throughout this meeting? From the first night, the second night, 
this morning just one thread now I'm going to release this to you I'm going to release this to you something I want to live in the spirit in such a degree that there are conversations in heaven about me. Gehazi was asked by the prophet, there's a woman, she built me a house with a table in it. Wonder what she wants. No, no, no. Beyond desire. And that usher said, I notice she doesn't have a child. About this time next year. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. She had never asked for a child. God's about to release to you a miracle you've never even asked for. No, you don't believe it. No, you don't believe it. You're not saying, I'll take that word. I'll take that right now, right now, right now, right now. All right. Be seated. Here's how you get it. Here's how you get it. Here's how you release yourself into it. If you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive the trifold prophet's reward that I just rehearsed to you. I wish I had three hours to teach it to you, but I don't. I believe the Holy Ghost spoke to me day before yesterday, because there's another theme in this meeting. And I believe I've written over 220 books but I've got some more left in me. I've made my finger crooked writing books because I can turn a computer on, but I can write a whole lot faster than I can type. I write them. This book on revival, when I began, was 180 pages. I spent two weeks more with it. Now it's 230 pages. I believe God's directing me to write a series of books called Everyday Doctrine. I'd like for you to learn about the Trinity. I'd like for you to learn about... You could, you know... I, 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 it would be disrespectful, but you could almost call it doctrine for dummies. You know, like there's computers for dummies and there's... Because whether you realize it or not, the church and many, many preachers are ignorant. I don't mean they're, they're dumb, that's why I wouldn't... Use, but they're misinformed or they are uninformed. You need every word these two men sitting right here have ever spoken. Every word of them. And it would change your life. God wants you well and prosperous. I just, this just keeps coming to me. You're going to get that bus. Just know that. Like, like it's so done. It's so done. Anyway, that's private. It's just so done. And there are three preachers in here that there's already conversations in heaven about your airplane. There are three of you. There are three of you. Three of you. 60 miles an hour is no way to get anywhere. Brother Copeland told me, I think 
I was flying our sixth airplane at that time. We're about to have our eighth. But when I was flying the sixth one, he said to me, uh, you need this airplane. He said he was flying around in his airplane and he turned to Gloria and said, what are we doing in Rod Parsley's airplane? I already had an airplane. I had had five. By the grace of God. Well, you need that when you're preaching 200 nights a year on the road. Most preachers don't preach 200 nights a year in three years. 200 nights in three years. That was just what I preached on the road. Five services a week here. Five television programs a year. I have said welcome to Breakthrough on 17,000 original programs. 17,000 times. And Brother Copeland said to me, he said, all these airplanes aren't anything. He said, Rod, in that Texas draw, Rod Parsley, Buff, and he always points his finger in my chest, po pokes me like that. He said, before Jesus comes, 500 miles an hour is not going to be nothing. He said, I expect to be here when God starts translating us from one continent to another to preach this gospel. He'll do it. I said he'll do it. You have no idea what's about to happen in the realm of the spirit. When we cut off every weight you ain't seen running yet when we cut off the sin we gonna run baby I mean the church is gonna run then we're gonna drive then we're gonna fly then we're gonna get translated God translated his men in the old covenant before the Holy Ghost. Amen. You want faith to believe stuff like that? You want faith to believe stuff like that? Then you have to understand the power resident in a seed. You have to. You have to. The seed is the incubator of everything in the kingdom of God. Not money, but the seed. Money is a seed. When God speaks to you about it, like he's speaking to you right now. You desire to tap in to what you lost coming back. Something in that book you've never laid your hand on. Or something coming in your future that you've never even asked for. I know what I'm talking about. I shared this with my sister before she went to heaven. I said, I sat down with her with a book, Brother Avanzini, and I showed her. She was living in a little apartment at the time. Now, I could have went and bought her a house, but that wouldn't have helped her. I said, right here, lest you and I lay hands on this, on these verses, let's believe. Vineyards you didn't plant. Houses you didn't build. And then I said, wait, 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 there's more. Full of good things you didn't buy and a man walked up to her and gave her a 4,500 square foot house two years old furnished and handed her the keys see you your doubt can't hurt my faith but my faith can help your doubt you didn't hear a word I just said you can cast your faith away and give up or you can direct your faith right now and be lifted up. That's your choice. Be seated. And here's what I have in my heart. While that man of God transported us into the realm of God's spirit to show us 
what belongs to us. Watch this. Say, I want it all. Well, if you want it all, then you can give anything. People are so funny. Well, I can only give 20. Yeah, and that's all you'll ever be able to give. Until you give to you understand something left, you're not listening. Until it gets your attention, faith isn't involved. So when your faith gets involved, the seed multiplies. One seed that you can barely see can grow a tree how big? 270 feet tall. 27 stories. That's almost as big as the karaoke church. How big around? 35 feet around. One seed. Wonder what a hundred seeds would do. Can you imagine that forest? How about this? How about God speak to every single person in this building to bless that man? To bless that man. His son passed a year ago. Those names he kept calling out, I told these preachers, those are his children. He's calling on them to help him. Wouldn't you like yours to at least be saved and on their way to heaven? Yeah. So a seed, believe. Activate your faith. I'm going to ask everyone who possibly can to honor this man of God. I said he was a man of a hundred years. I want everyone who possibly can to sow a seed and bless him of a hundred dollars. I'm sowing 10 of those toward him. Don't ever let an offering be received. Bishop Anaba just consecrated a bishop in City Harvest Network, had to leave yesterday to get back to Africa. 300 churches under his leadership. But before he left, he said, I will keep a record of every offering ever received in your pulpit, and I will sow in every single one. And he left a $10,000 check. You want to draw on that anointing. You have a right to every anointing that you sow into. Because your faith unlocks that door. Now, if you can't sow $100 or you don't feel led to sow $100, do something. Do something. Whatever the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart, do something. Because he may speak to you about 500 I don't want to hinder him. You understand? Father, they know your voice. If they've heard your voice in my voice, let them respond. Let them respond to the Holy Spirit speaking to them about their future and conversations being held in heaven about their tomorrow. And may they access it by a step of faith. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. The ushers are coming. Those of you still with us online, all the information's right there. Now, there are 20 food trucks out there so the rumbly in your tumbly can be calmed. Amen? Two o'clock will change your life, and that's not a cliche. The power of God resident in the anointing of this woman. And, and I say this a lot, and it's very true. She is often imitated but never duplicated. And I'll tell you why. Because it's 1,000% authentic.
it is who she is and who God has made her. And you are going to be blessed. And then we have only one more. Wow. Seven o'clock tonight. Oh, Israel Houghton's dropping by tonight. You might enjoy that. Tell all your friends. Text it, tweet it, send it out. I want to thank so many of these preachers, City Harvest Network, pastors, and so forth that left your churches this morning. That takes a great step of faith, you know, that your assistant won't inside a rebellion while you're gone but we're glad we're thankful and I looked around and I watched you and I know it's been more than worth it you're going to be a different animal when you get in that pulpit next time I promise you that Sam Rodriguez one of the greatest voices to this generation will be here tonight don't miss it we love you Get all the merchy, merch, merch. Enjoy that. We'll see you this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Sowing into the kingdom of God has never been easier or more secure than with smart giving. Any smartphone will work. To use your smart giving, open your text messaging app and send a message to the number 45777. In the message of your text, Type the amount of your gift, space, WHC. If it's your first time giving, you'll receive a secure link to set up your account. Select your home campus, enter your giving method, and where you would like to receive your instant giving receipt. If you are already registered, the process is just the same. Just send a text message to 45777. Type the amount of your gift, space, WHC. You'll receive your receipt immediately. If you prefer, you can also sew online at whc.life or by phone or mail. Just call the number on your screen or send your gift to the address displayed.
Yes, I worship you, Holy Spirit, you are welcome, fill this day I've been given and every breath I take and every word I speak and glory to your name there is joy in your presence where you are heavy burdens pass away as I offer you my heart said Jesus I worship you Holy Spirit Come on, ask him right where you are. Come and flood your heart. 